Okay, so I want to talk about something really elementary in 2D geometry. And it's the idea that points and lines are actually more similar to each other than most people realize. So let's think about a couple of different points. Now, one of the most basic things in geometry is that we can draw a straight line through these two points. So, okay, that's simple. There's a line between two distinct points, but what about two distinct lines? Do they make a point? Well, look at these two lines. These two lines are different and they're crossing at this red point here. So is this true of any two distinct lines? Well, there can be some debate on this point because what happens if these two lines are parallel? Are they meeting at a point now? The classical theory of Euclid would probably say no, these two lines never meet. But there's another way we can think about it and it's extremely profitable. So basically there's a form of geometry called projective geometry where we imagine that parallel lines meet at infinity. So all we do is expand our kind of view of a plane to imagine that way off at infinity, there's a sort of line or giant circle of points and any pair of parallel lines will actually meet at such a point. Why do we do this? Well, one of the main reasons is because we like symmetry. You see, now we have a theory where for any two distinct points, there's a unique line through them and any two distinct lines are going to meet at a unique point. There's symmetry there. So by allowing these extra points at infinity, our view of geometry becomes much more symmetric and elegant. So this is projective geometry, where points and lines are on similar standing with each other. It's a very beautiful and elegant subject, and there's lots of interesting features of it. And what I want to talk about today is something about this kind of point line duality. Now here we have a point. Now my claim is that in this kind of projective geometry, points and lines are on a kind of similar standing to each other. So then there probably ought to be a way that we can interchange the points and the lines, that we can swap around these two sorts of similar acting things. And it turns out that there is a way that we can swap around these points and these lines. And this turns out to be something really fundamental in geometry. It's something called a polarity. So let's suppose that we have a circle. We could do a similar thing with any conic section, but we'll use a circle for simplicity. Now it turns out that we can use this circle to find the dual of our point. And here's how we do it. We draw tangent lines from our point to the circle. We find where those tangent lines meet the circle and we join them. Now this pink line that we've just constructed, this is the dual to our point. And you can see from this animation that for any point outside of our circle, there's a sort of line that corresponds with it. As we move the point close to the circle, this line comes close to being a tangent line to the circle. As we move our point away, this line almost goes through the center of our circle. Okay, so what I'm trying to describe is the polarity which is induced by this circle. This is a transformation which is interchanging the points and the lines. So you can see that as I move around this point, the dual of this point, also known as its polar, this line, is going to move around as well. And in fact, every point on our plane is going to get sent to a line in this kind of way. And there's lots of interesting features. For example, as I send this point to the center of the circle, the line that it gets mapped to gets sent to the line at infinity. Anyhow, I've explained to you how we can find 
this dual of our point when the point's outside the circle. And we can do that just by drawing these tangent lines like so. And now we can really think of this dual of this point as the line which connects the places where our tangents meet the circle. But there are many other questions that we can ask as well. For example, how do we find the dual of a point inside our circle? Or what about if the situation's working the other way around? What about if we start with a line? How can we then find the kind of point corresponding to that? How can we dualize a line? So the key to solving all of these problems is a fundamental feature of these polarities, and that is that they preserve incidence. So what I mean by that is that if we have two elements, let's say a point and a line, which are touching each other before we perform this polarity, this transformation, then after we perform the polarity, the things that those elements are sent to will also be touching each other. And this is really the key to solving all of these problems. So to illustrate this, let's think about this problem of trying to dualize this line that I've drawn here. So let's pick a point on this line, any point we like that's outside of our circle. But now here is the critical point. We're trying to find the dual of our pink line. And we know that this green point is touching our pink line. And because this kind of polarity preserves incidence, that means that the dual of this green point is going to be touching the dual of our pink line. So what this means is that if we dualize our green point, like so, we get this green line, okay? And now we know that the dual of the pink line, the thing we're looking for, has actually got to be somewhere on this green line that we've just drawn, okay? This is a consequence of this thing I was saying about polarities preserving incidence. But how does this help us? Well, it helps us because we can just do the same kind of thing again, and then we're actually going to find what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do now is just pick another point on this pink line that's outside of a circle, another green point, and I'm going to find the dual of that. And once again, I've created this green line. And once again, my kind of incidence argument implies that the dual of the pink line has to be somewhere on this second green line as well, right? Because this second green point was on the original pink line, therefore its dual must be touching the dual of the pink line. So now our problem is solved because the logic I've just talked about implies that the dual of the pink line has to be on both of these green lines. And there's only one place it can be then. The dual of our pink line has to be here. Okay. So you see now how we can use this idea of polarities preserving incidence to solve these sort of problems. And so my claim is that this pink point that we've just found is actually the dual of our pink line. And I can demonstrate this. All I have to do is draw tangents out of this pink point. And you can see that these tangent lines meet the circle at these two places where this original pink line goes through. You can see that the pink point and the pink line are duals to each other. So what I've been trying to illustrate here is that using this circle, we can dualize the points and the lines on the plane. And the key to doing this is this observation that this kind of polarity, this kind of transformation which we use, preserves the incidence of the elements. So I've already talked about how 
we can find the dual of a point by drawing these tangent lines. If that point's outside the circle, what about if the point's inside the circle? How do we find its dual in this case? Well, I'll quickly show you how this is done and you can think about why this works. And it has to do with the incidence preserving features that I was talking about before. So the idea is pretty simple. Draw any two lines through the point that you're interested in. Now just find the jewels of those two lines. You can do that by the procedure which I described before. And connecting those two points, well that gives us what we're looking for. The jewel of our pink point inside the circle. There are all sorts of other fascinating things that we can do using these kind of polarities. And one of them is circle inversion. So think about this purple point. What we want to do is in some sense, reflect it in our orange circle. We want to find the circle inversion of it. So how do we do it? Well, we draw a line through this purple point and the center of this orange circle, which we're using to do circle inversion. Now we find the polar or the dual of our purple point. And now simply we find where this purple line crosses the blue line. And this is the circle inversion of our original purple point. Now this idea of circle inversion is extremely beautiful as well, because it's a transformation which sends circles to circles. I'll see if I can demonstrate this. I'll move the original object around in a circle and we'll plot the trace of its image. And you see that that's also making a circle. So now I'm finding the circle inversions of points on a different circle. But we see again that this kind of collection of images again forms a circle. And that's because this wonderful kind of circle inversion is a sort of map of our plane that sends circles to circles. But all of this wonderful theory of polarities, it also works if we're using a parabola or a hyperbola or an ellipse. This whole theory works for any conic section and it's really uh, one of the fundamental ideas in projective geometry.